and welcome to another episode of Carolyn Talks Television. I'm Carolyn Topol, your host, and of course I am with my lovely co-host, Rachel Arnett. Hello again. And today we are doing one of my all-time favorite subjects. And my mom's. Uh, oh, okay, good, and good. My mom. Uh, <laughs> we're doing soap operas. I have held back doing these for a long time. This has been a burning desire, pretty much the reason why the television show began. Uh, absolutely, because I cannot keep myself off those soap operas. Mm -hmm. At one time, I have to say, I literally followed every single soap opera when there were a whole lot of them on every single network. Oh yeah. But now, we're down to four. Mm -hmm. I remember there were upwards of eight, like nine, 10 at one point. At when least. I, I think school. there may have even been as many as 10 or 12 at one point, but, and some have cycled out and some have cycled in. That's a lot of characters to keep track of. It is, but the nice thing about soap operas is even before there were the days of DVRs mm -hmm. and even before the days of the old VHS tape recording, mm -hmm. the stories went at a pace that yeah. allowed you to keep up That's even true. if you missed some. That's true because it was truly a day-to-day, -day, even slower mm -hmm. pace. Well, and sometimes the storylines are really only like 15 minutes. You know, they, they'll take the whole episode, but it's only a 15 minute time span. That's which, right. Which can take, you know, I can see what you're saying there. That's right, that's <laughs> right. And even to this day, sometimes those episodes, you can have one day last a week on these shows. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, there's only four left on the networks, mm -hmm. and that's what we'll focus on. And those are on CBS, mm -hmm. which is the big hitter, it's got two left. Yep. They have The Young and the Restless and The Bold and the Beautiful. Mm. And ABC has General Hospital and NBC has Days of Our Lives. Which are, they have to be the longest running ones too. The, there were a lot that like came and left, like Passions was, seems like a very brief. Yeah, yeah, Passions, to, uh, Santa Barbara wasn't on for yeah. a long time. Some of them that had been on a long time, surprisingly, did leave, and we'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit about those. But um, General Hospital is, at this moment, the uh, senior citizen in the group. <laughs> and uh, we'll, give you, we'll talk a little bit about yeah. that. Um, but what I'd like to start out with is, a lot of people sell soap opera short. I agree. They don't, they don't give them the credit they're due. And they talk about the soap opera actor is not the same as the other actor. Well, mm -hmm. I got to tell you, so not true. First of all, soap opera actors frequently have to memorize 20, 30, 40 pages for a day, sometimes more. Absolutely. Depending on quickly. How, <laughs> quickly, depending on how hot their mm -hmm. story is at the time. They may get a break afterwards, but that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They have to do that storyline and keep up with those pages because it's a fast turnaround. I can't even imagine having to memorize that much for the one, you know, the few hours that you're on set that day and then the next day you get a, a another, whole other set oh. of pages. Right, right. And one of the top people who I know, I want to share some of the big names that have come from soaps, people don't think about. Mm -hmm. Right now, big name, Justin Hartley. Huge name. One of, which it's funny because it's a great show. He did a great job on a couple of different soap operas, and now he's on This Is Us. Yes, he was. He starred on Passions, and he was a superstar on The Young and the Restless. Mm -hmm. In fact, I once recently heard him in an interview say he almost did not take the network show This Is Us. He plays Kevin mm -hmm. on This Is Us. He almost didn't take it because he was concerned about leaving The Young and the Restless, which was a great gig for him. Absolutely. You know, he, he was a star on that show. He was a central character. Um, stories revolved around his character. Mm -hmm. But he took the chance and boy, did that pay off. But he's one of the more recent exiles from soaps. <laughs> exiles of, <laughs> get out, you're no longer welcome. <laughs> Let's go back a little bit. I'm going to flip way back now. Yep. I'm going to turn the page way back in history to an actress that has a resume that any star in Hollywood would envy, mm -hmm. Julianne Moore. Uh, who is just everything. She, she can uh, do it all. She, I think she's been in it all. 
And she was one of the stars of As the World Turns way back when. Mm. She played twins, a good twin and an evil twin. Which is this like perfect trope that I love so much. It, it, it was beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. The stories were great. She shined. Mm -hmm. And that does take tremendous acting chops to pull that off That's really right. well. Because I've seen even not good, good twin, bad twin, um, Hallmark had a movie recently where one character was playing twins, and I had no idea who she was playing at every, any given time. It was really rough. Oh, that, to that's try and rough. Tell. That that. But with Julianne Moore, you could tell immediately based on the way she was holding herself. Yes. Based, just exactly, it was such the a clear difference. The facial expressions, yep. everything. You knew who she was in any scene she was in. Unless she was, and even when she played alternate scenes, mm -hmm. like imitating her sibling. Yeah. You knew Which, what was happening. The layers to that performance, like yourself playing someone, playing someone else. And of course, we know, of course, Julianne, Julianne Moore is now a superstar. Incredible. In so many movies recently. Well, now what I'd like to do is move on to the shows that we see now. And let's start by going back all the way to 1963. Um, I don't want to say if I was born yet. Just saying. I however, will say that I, I was, know, <laughs> was not. However, I can honestly say Rachel was not even a glimmer in her mother's eyes if her mother was barely a toddler <laughs> yeah, at the time. Exactly. General Hospital. Mm -hmm. General Hospital, which is now turning 54, going on 55 years old. It's amazing. 55 years old. Um, this show takes place in the fictitious Port Charles, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be somewhere near Buffalo, New York, <laughs> um, which is kind of amazing because there are times in Port Charles that they are wearing short sleeves, and I know in Buffalo, <laughs> New York, it's not happening, but that's okay. That's no one is ever wearing short sleeves in Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even sure they do that in July and August, to be yeah. honest. I lived in Syracuse, so I can say that. I know. <laughs> It's a strange, cruel climate at times, although yeah. they, mi they milked that for some of their episodes oh, yeah, at some point. Um, this was a wonderful mm -hmm. evolution. It started, it revolved around a hospital and the hospital team. And the nice thing is that the legacy of the early characters, many of whom have sadly passed away mm -hmm. because they had adults on the show back then, mm -hmm. um, they still have the family legacies on this show. Mm -hmm. They haven't lost them. Uh, There's they still don't, photos of them up in the houses. They're in the houses, the and there even is a wall. I, I personally call it the wall of fame in the hospital. Yeah. But every once in a while, you'll see a younger person mm -hmm. in general hospital, in the general hospital, walk down the hall paying tribute mm -hmm. to those early... Um, characters and starting back with Steve and Audrey Hardy. Steve Hardy, who was the doctor uh, in everybody's eye, who, who <laughs> was the, the king who did it all. Um, it really was revolving around the families. It stayed with that. We've seen sometimes, as there always are in all these soap operas, arcs, mm -hmm. and some of the arcs lose their way. But fortunately for us, General Hospital hasn't. Mm -hmm. it always My mom finds says it's, it's remained pretty consistent that it, although there are moments where something insane happens and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> it doesn't have the ridiculous arcs that some of the other shows had with like witches in broomsticks and passions. Which, <laughs> right, right. which I'm not going to lie. Talk I love passions. <laughs> which I loved, but General Hospital, I think, has always felt a little more grounded in reality. I, I agree. For example, I know a lot of people were surprised even just this week on the show or what would have been about a month ago by the time this particular episode of our show airs, there was an earthquake and everybody was like, earthquake near Buffalo, New York, really? But then they gave it an explanation as mm -hmm. about drilling um, near certain uh, near areas yep. that were underground. And so it was the fallout from drilling in an okay. area that there shouldn't have been. So it wasn't like this was a natural disaster. Yeah. It was an induced disaster. So it, it sort of gives a little kick to the show mm -hmm. without losing the explanation. And yet 
it's nice to be able to extend reality because it is yeah. TV. It's supposed to be exactly. drama. It's supposed to be escapism. You have to suspend your reality, reality, yeah, reality just absolutely. a little bit to say, okay, I'm going to fix <laughs> This is a TV show. Maybe drilling does or does not cause earthquakes, but you know what? It does. For now, it does. For, for this week, it <laughs> this sure moment, did. It At that does. moment on the show, <laughs> it sure did. Now, you know, people ask when you get involved in soap operas. Mm -hmm. And some people get involved because they have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. I got involved because I had one of the few parents when I was a child who worked full time mm. with a mom who worked full time. Yep. So I had a babysitter who loved a soap opera and got me engaged in it to the point that I didn't even understand it. But you and, couldn't stop watching. But I couldn't stop watching. It was Dark Shadows. Oh, nice. My first soap opera was The Old Dark Shadows with Barnabas Collins. Yes. And I have to tell you, if there was anything campier on television, if you, <laughs> anybody ever gets a chance, YouTube Dark Shadows, the original. Oh, you could beautiful. laugh at the sets and you could laugh at the dialogue and, and enjoy every minute. And they knew it and they didn't care. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they reveled in the camp. And even though I was a little girl, the vampires didn't scare me because it was kind of cute and amusing <laughs> and the costuming was so much fun mm -hmm. um so i go back to that and from then on in it was like a disease mm -hmm. it was contagious <laughs> every time oh, i wow. saw every time <laughs> i saw a soap opera i got hooked so fast and it was long after that sitter and i parted ways <laughs> <laughs> Soap opera comorbidity. There, there one, we go. There the we go. <laughs> enabler, enabler. We go. <laughs> now, we just talked about General Hospital. Yep. General Hospital graduated some pretty significant stars of its own. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back to someone I think probably most of the audience may have heard about, Ricky Martin. You know, I feel like I've heard of him. <laughs> I don't know. Sings a couple <laughs> of songs that have caught on now and then. Yep. And was just on, or is at the moment still on, uh, the assassination of Gianni Versace. That's right. Playing his partner. Oh, my which God. Which is another soap opera-esque role, really. It is, but so much more um, intense a role. Yeah, a lot darker. Very dark. Um, and a very exciting miniseries, really. Yeah. Um, well, so anything by Ryan Murphy, anything in the American Crime Story, American Horror Story, you're going to get yes. the intensity and the incredible writing. And Ricky Martin really has maintained his ability to not only really keep the drama going as an actor, but of course, you know, his singing is unquestionably mm -hmm. one of the best. I, I love, he could open his mouth and just sing the phone book and I would be, would be en wonderful. enthralled. Absolutely. Um, and then also from that same show, we have another actor, sort of went in a different direction, John Stamos. Who is also in... Uh, Ryan Murphy show Scream Queens. That's right. And the, he was on Glee as well. He so, was on he was yep. on Glee a little bit, but of course, for me, my heart has always been watching my child <laughs> fall in love as she grew up watching Uncle Jesse Who, on Full House. It, I don't know that. Anytime and he's, I and see actually, him, I see Uncle Jesse. That's true. I, he revels in that. He, he loves revels that. in that. Well, he's he's the one who brought back Fuller House. Yep. He was the one who who really, I believe, pioneered bringing back Fuller House on Netflix to give the whole new generation a storyline. And he has come on board a couple of times on that show, mm -hmm. visited the group, and uh, you, you can't say enough about him. I really think that this is an actor that um, just brings a smile to people's faces mm -hmm. when he's on screen. And he played a, a teen wow. on General Hospital um, back in the day. And now we can move on. How's that? Let's yeah. go on, let's get to the next soap. We don't wanna lose you, anyone. John. I'll miss you. We'll miss you, right. <laughs> so now we're going to go a little younger, but not by much, to <laughs> Days of Our Lives, mm -hmm. which started in 1965. And I, I saw a little bit more of this, I think, than General Hospital. Okay. When my mom watched General Hospital, I think I was a little too young. She would kick me out of the room. Oh, this okay. Back in the racy 80s. Oh, the, oh the racy 80s. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm calling them. <laughs> okay. Days of Our Lives, I definitely watched more when I was a teenager. Oh, all right. Well, Days of Our Lives had some sort of uh, crazy stories, too, that had yes. accompanied it, you know, exorcisms and things like that. And this takes place in the mythical town of Salem, somewhere in the Midwest, not far from Chicago, because mm -hmm. they're always just an hour from, they can drive to Chicago. That's all yep. we know. But other than that, crazy things happen in Salem. 
there are more people, I believe, on that soap opera that died and came back to life than I think any other, maybe all the other soap yeah. operas combined. And, and it's funny because sometimes they explain it and it, you know, uh, they lost their they lost their memory most recently, but sometimes right, right. <laughs> sometimes they're just back. <laughs> they're like, okay, <laughs> I missed you. Thank you for coming back. You thought I died, but <laughs> I really was not in that casket, yeah. or I really was not in the pit, or I I fell whatever. out of the boat before it exploded. <laughs> there you go, an explanation for everything. Yeah, exactly, and somehow it works. Yeah, it works. You're just so happy to see them back. <laughs> you don't care. You're like, oh, okay. I watched you get stabbed. It's fine. It's right. We're good. We're You're good. all better. <laughs> a bandage helped. Exactly. <laughs> um, anyway, this, this soap, once again, the longevity mm -hmm. through the writing, through the creativity, um, a little darker sometimes. Absolutely. Yep. Um, especially with some of those death experiences, because mm -hmm. there was uh, some crazy characters on there. Um, I think a lot of people always harken back to the time that one of the main characters to this day, Marlena Evans, mm -hmm was uh, possessed. Mm -hmm. And revealed to be a serial killer. Correct? But then wasn't. But, oh, but she wasn't because she but was she, possessed. Because she was, it, it was very it complicated. Was, and it was shocking because she's like the darling of the show. Yes, exactly. So th this show has its longevity because it can really go that far. Mm -hmm. And the audience lets it. Yeah. And they're willing to let it. Right now, they're working with a, a brand new storyline with a fairly new writer on board. I say fairly new, about a year. Um, and he's not a new writer, but just doing days sort of gave it a, a boost. And with one of the younger actresses is now creating a uh, storyline of multi-personalities. Oh, I heard about that, yeah. Um, and it's a character that has suffered from mental illness. So while... It seems like, wow, this is a wild story. First of all, the actress is doing outstanding. Her name is Marcy Miller, playing mm -hmm. a character called Abigail Devereaux. But it's not so far out of the realm of possibility mm -hmm. because she did have mental illness. This isn't a character that was always perfectly fine and wonderful and then just went snap and she lost her mind. Mm -hmm. This works. This works. Yeah, because sometimes the transition on other shows, it is that immediate transition and it feels insensitive and kind of icky. So and, and, and wrong, like and it wrong. doesn't fit the character. But yeah. this actually, they selected a character that it works with, don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah. Um, getting a little younger now. We're Slowly getting younger. Fountain of youth. The Fountain of youth. We go, speaking of youth, <laughs> the young and the restless. Great segue. Thank you. The young and the restless <laughs> was born in 1973. And that's set, once again, in fictional Genoa City. I believe it's supposed to be like Wisconsin, mm -hmm. where Genoa City is. Um, They're all over the map. They, they really are. They, yeah, they really are. New York, Chicago-ish, Wisconsin. I, it is kind of fun, because yeah. the next one will be in another part of the world. Yeah. So if there's four left, they hit the country. This is really... Mm -hmm. put it, it took a step into the sexy. Mm -hmm. The Abbots and the Newmans are the two focus families. They are still the two focus families. And everybody on this show, from the day that it started, was kind of had that sexiest edge, a little more dangerous, a little mm -hmm. more risque. Um, the, the person who is basically the matriarch, or one of the matriarchs left on the show um, after Jean Cooper died, mm. um, uh, is a character, Nikki Newman, who started, who is, you know, huge, rich matriarch now, but started as a stripper. I love that they don't have, like, they, they, they touch on the nitty gritty. They really did well, and she was up. pulled out of the dregs of the world by her rich, mm -hmm. rich husband, Victor Newman. Thank so, goodness for Victor. Oh, uh, yeah, Victor, <laughs> who is probably one of the most horrifying people know, on the planet and is amazing has any redeeming qualities, but yet somehow they keep figuring out how to redeem him. He's like brief moments where you're like, all right, okay. And then he does something else terrible and you hate him again. <laughs> you hate him a lot and you yeah. hate him again and it's for a long time and his family leaves him, but somehow they all come back, but it works. Mm -hmm. The writing works. And I'm not sure how it works, but it's done so beautifully well, which is why they are such a multi Emmy winning show. Mm -hmm. Now, Moving forward, 
because that's where Justin Hartley was from. I want to get that last show in. Absolutely. The most recent baby on the bandwagon that's still left <laughs> was born in 1987, and that's... I was actually alive for this one. You were there, yes! Yes, I was too. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. It's all it's good. Fun. I'm sure my mom watched it while I was toddling around, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the bold and the beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the bold and the beautiful takes place in L.A. and is all about the world of high fashion. Mm -hmm. It, it Which was is the able... perfect setting for a show with the word bold in the title. Absolutely. I think, I LA think it's is great. just vibrant and exciting. It, it was exciting. They always show scenes of LA. Mm -hmm. um, they're outdoors more because they can be. And this show to this day and is still has remained a half hour. They're the only soap opera mm -hmm. left at a half hour. And yet they have been able to make it so they do the big trips and they do um, you know, outside the studio shooting. Not only outside the studio in LA, but they even went to Australia last year. Mm. I mean, this show goes everywhere. They, I, I don't know what their budget is and who they know, <laughs> but I want to be their friend yes, if I yes, ever please. make a show. Um, just fabulous. And once again, um, as with uh, two of those shows, both CBS shows, The Bells, mm -hmm were a f legacy family of soap opera creators. They just had the knack to know what to create, how to create it for the modern world. And it, it's funny because each show you can kind of look at as a microcosm, like the first couple of seasons as a microcosm of what that era was like in TV at that time. Yes, Because you see it you going can. from the more demure, like family drama to like the sexy, like, Absolutely. Oh, I, I can totally see that. And, and the characters the to this day, um, mm -hmm. the stars of the show really still have that air of, in that particular show, The Bold and the Beautiful, and also with The Young and the Restless, that any of the people who are the focus characters could get up on a catwalk, mm -hmm. men and women. Oh, absolutely. They are very, very chic, very chic. Um, walk right off set onto the stage of America's Next Top Model and just live. There you go. There you go. <laughs> now, I'd like to touch a little bit on some of the soaps that have come and gone. Absolutely. One Is of the, the ones... The In Memoriam segment, <laughs> scrolling by. <laughs> oh, gosh, how sad. Well, one That's of my favorite soaps had always been, and I watched it from its first day, was All My Children. Mm. That, was that one ABC. hurt when, for a lot of people when that was canceled. I think just seeing Susan Lucci leave the screen hurt for a lot, mm -hmm. for, including myself because Susan Lucci was there at the beginning and she was there through the end. Mm -hmm. um, such an incredible talent in and of herself. And it was a very exciting show. It was a beautiful show. It had many, many fine talents, um, two of whom are very famous now, but I think many people watch Kelly Ripa every morning. A few. Yeah, just a, a few. couple, maybe. Maybe one And she met her husband, Mark Consuelos, on that show. They were both starring on All My Children. That was how they met. And uh, another name that might be familiar is Sarah Michelle Geller. Oh, Buffy, my Buffy. Yes. <laughs> Every, everybody's Buffy, but yours. Yeah. I'll let her be yours She's today. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Sarah yep. Michelle Geller played Susan Lucci's daughter. Okay. And now, yep. you know, it can it takes talent <laughs> to stand in a room with Susan. to stand in a room with Susan Lucci and to play opposite her. Mm -hmm. To be able to hold your own in, and, in any scene with Susan Lucci, you win. And, and boy, day. talk about really filling in the trials and errors to start with, mm -hmm. but she she succeeded and look what happened. Big success now. Um, another show, One Life to Live. Mm was also an ABC show, long, long duration show. That one had his young talent way back when in his youth, Ryan Philippi was on yeah. One Life to Live and supposedly on soap opera television, daytime soap TV, mm -hmm. he played the first gay teen. I do not really believe he was given a romance of any sort. That sort yeah. of came later with other soap operas. Absolutely. But that's um, that progression again. You know, at the time, it was probably a big deal. Right. It was probably somewhat scandalous that a gay character was even in existence on the show. Correct. In the same Correct. way that Will and Grace led to Queer as Folk. You know? That's right. The, the progression that happens. And because uh, as the world turns was, I believe, the show that had the first gay 
couple that we really can assume had sex. Yeah. We didn't see we, it. Yeah. But, we but assume. We did get to see them kiss a couple times, which mm -hmm. was a big deal. Um, the shows in soap operas are this little tiny world mm -hmm. of daytime TV. Yet they really do have an impact. They have an impact on those who are on them, many of whom have gone on to become superstars. Um, I really think that they're undersold in many respects. People just don't give those shows the respect mm -hmm. they deserve or the actors the respect they deserve because not only do those actors have to memorize those pages, but someone's got to be writing them, getting creative because to have shows that have run 50 plus years, there's got to be Five some, times a week. Five days a week, all throughout the year. You don't see soap operas go into repeat. They have to have a creative team I cannot even ongoing. Imagine. And you know, frequently you see that they say, oh, the writer was fired. Well, what happened is they probably ran out of steam for those characters because then you'll see writer A is now working on show B. Yeah. Because then they have now new characters and they have thoughts where they can take the, new, the characters that mm -hmm. they're now being given. I can't imagine you running out, not running out of steam. Oh, absolutely. If you've worked several years with the same characters, there's got to be more going. Um, one example, though, of, of the birth of superstars um, before we tie things up. I'm just going to do a, a one, one name drop here. Some of you may have heard a guy who was on Another World, Brad Pitt. No. Another stranger right here. Yes, yeah, never, never heard of him. You might want to look him up later right, on IMDb. Fine. But he was on Another World. So really, I think people sell these shows short. Mm -hmm. I think you need to get in and try them if you haven't. And you the, can join them at any, at any point. You'll figure it out. You'll figure exactly. out the storyline soon. And DVRs are great for this. DVRs are great for this. The daytime Emmys, the nominations are coming out soon for the actors in all categories. And I know I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, and I will share with you my opinions on those going forward, even though we, this will be our show about self <laughs> I I won't do every show about soaps, I promise. <laughs> Um, and hopefully you will follow mm -hmm. Rachel and I online. We are on YouTube at Carol and Topol Talk. And I am on Twitter and Facebook. You can find us all by just typing in the search box, Carol and Topol, Rachel Arnett. Look for us, follow us. We would love to see you and chat with you. And make sure you watch our show when you can, because we want to hear from you about what you want to see us do too. Yes, suggest. Suggest. suggest go for it if there's something we haven't done yet we're there for you musical tv shows specifically crazy ex-girlfriend do i talk about crazy ex-girlfriend i feel like i do just <laughs> once in a while but maybe we can touch on musical tv shows that would be so much fun oh there's a new one rise sorry getting ahead of myself okay <laughs> we will see you next month on carolyn talks television